You're watching the Coaches Roundtable on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Welcome to Coach's Round Table. I'm Matt Cody. To my right, the Swami George Abraham. To my left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Under the spotlight, high school track, the 56th Butler Invitational. The Butler boys and girls swept the titles for their girls, their fifth straight Butler track invite championship under Coach John Williams. He's built a powerful program there with the girls. Butler Jr. Guinness Brown, he won the 100, 200, 400, and anchored the winning 1600 relay. He was named a track. MVP teammate CJ Singleton won the 3200 setting a meet record his time of 9.0942 is the fastest time in the state and ranks in the top 50 nationally how about that yeah it's uh it's great my my I remember my kid ran 904 9.04 and missed the state record by 100 second uh, he's get he might break it nine oh nine get there. Uh, and the Butler <laughs> boys and girls have to be the favored teams to to win the uh, WPL maybe even a state and send a number of athletes onto the finals. North Allegheny junior Dwayne Taylor won the triple jump forty five six and a half and a long jump twenty one seven and a half. Trevor Pascal this has been his story all year. This kid is really good. Every meet where he's with Guinness Brown, he finishes second to Brown in the 100 and 200 as he did at the Butler Invitational. Ty Fluhardy of Riverside won the 800. Gabe Nichols of Grove City the 1600. Connor Vass Gall of Wilmington the shot put 62 feet. This kid's pretty good, George. Oh, he's throwing it out there. I've heard about him for years. And Josh Drevis of Grove City won the high jump. Girls results, Butler Jr., Emma Lehman, she was the track MVP, first in the 300 hurdles, second in the 100 hurdles, anchored the winning 400 relay, and ran the first leg on a winning 1600 relay. Hampton Sr., Hannah Shepner, she was the field MVP with three medals, first in the long jump, third in the triple jump, fourth in the high jump. She set two new school records for Hampton. Mohawk Sr., Hannah McDaniel, she's headed to Robert Morris for track. She's also outstanding basketball player for mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. championship yeah. Mohawk team. Yeah. First in the 100 meters, second in the 200, and anchored the second place 400 for relay. Also, Marianne Ackerman of Slippery Rock High School, she won the javelin. Gianna Bedell of Slippery Rock High School, she took first in the high jump. And Abby Steffler of Grove City, she won the 800. Other tr high school track results, Josh Konjerski of Slippery Rock High School, Broke his own school record in javelin for the second time this year. Now with a uh, toss of 197 feet, 8.5 inches. David Stam of Monotol, he picked up four first. He won the shot discus javelin and was part of the winning 400 relay team. And Hannah Burgoon of Monotol, she won the 800, the 1600, the 3200, and anchored the winning 3200 relay team. She's having an outstanding season. Let me ask Al, like the 3A and the 2A, does it necessarily mean that the 3A time will always be better or the distance, or is it like a 90% of the time? Yeah. 90% okay. of the time. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. And, that's and, and not. With, with the bigger schools to spread their strength, kids may run two events, sometimes three. In the smaller schools, they're out there running always the better athletes at three and four events. Yeah, mo most times. Like the Jake Walker, the kid I was talking about, there's been kids in, in upper that have broke that record too. So, I'm t yeah, usually – Track and field, um, it's very difficult to move from 2A to 3A and compete the same way, no question about it. And here's the great <clears> thing <throat> about the Butler invite out of when I was coaching track. It's always such a great, exciting event. Over 1,500 athletes participated in the two days. And they're all good. Yeah. Very seldom do you go there just to show up. I know that usually, makes sense. Usually, usually you go there because, like the Wilmington kid, if a kid from Wilmington comes in, the, in there, and does well. He's good. No, he's not going to show up at the Butler Invitational. He throw 47. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I hope someday we can get up there and, and cover the event, at least the final 
that would be fun. The events, be it, fun. it would be tremendous uh, to do. In baseball, this kid's having a tremendous season. Pitcher Gavin Phillips had knocked a five-inning, one-hit shutout, nine-to-nothing win over Freeport. Pitcher Walker Vogan of Slippery Rock High School, <clears> nine <throat> strikeouts and a three-hitter, a win over Conneaut. Uh, Madden Clement of Butler, he pitched a four-hitter and a 5-1 win over Pine Richland with seven Ks. Peter Kraska of Mars, two home runs and six RBI. Matt Morose of Mars, three hits. Luke DeSanti of Knock, three hits. And Brett Galsic of Slippery Rock High School, three hits and four RBI. Softball, Allison Walker of Carn City, three hits and four stolen bases. Garrett Malochik of Carn City, a home run and five RBI. Ashley Fox of Carn City, home run, three RBI and four runs scored. Alyssa Harris of Mars, four hits. Bailey Rickenbrode of Knock, she hit a grand slam. How about this effort by pitcher Autumn Powell of Freeport? She threw a three-hit, eight-nothing shot hop win with 19 strikeouts for the Freeport Yellow Jackets. I mean, struck out everyone but two batters. Mm -hmm. The fielders took a rest that day. <laughs> Could take a nap, eat, yes. a, eat a candy bar while you're out there. Uh, Paige uh, Grescott of Slipper Rock High School, 11K. She also backed herself up with three hits. Uh, Maya Burgo of Freeport, three hits. Abby Rotman of Montetal, three hits and four RBI. Taylor Schultz and Emma Covert of Montetal, three hits. And Emily Staub of Montetal, four RBI. That's all you have to know about how good Montetal's softball team is. And in high school hockey, 3A, North Allegheny won the Penguin Cup but lost a tough 4-2 decision in Belvern Prep in the Pennsylvania Cup championship game. All those games were played at the Lemieux Sports Center. Yeah, we don't get a chance to talk about hockey a lot, but it's a growing sport around this area also, no question. Malvern's down east, too, I believe. Malvern Prep, yes. Uh, out there they call it, what, the Flyers' Cup. You win that yeah. half, and over here it's the Penguins' Cup. And then across, uh, Sky DePredo, number one ranked North Allegheny. She had seven goals, the eighth straight win for the Tigers who opened the season with a loss. Peyton Riddle of Seneca Valley, five goals. And honors girls basketball, Post-Gazette, Lizzie Grosh, of North Allegheny. She was a 6A player of the year, and Corianne Hauser of Rochester, she's the 1A player of the year. Football news, uh, college football, Westminster finishes 5-0 and to win the President's Athletic Conference title, a shortened season, but nonetheless, nice for those guys to get out there and play. Now they'll be ready for the fall yeah. and build on this spring uh, championship. I would think it, and Alan, I, we found out something we didn't know. It's their first title in 30 years. And did they allow fans at the at the games? There were fans. Westminster? I saw. I watched it on TV. There, it wasn't packed, but there were fans. Nice. And in pro football, former Butler star quarterback Scott Milanovic, he's the new quarterback coach for the Indy Colts. You know, he'd moved to Canada to be head coach, and then it was wiped out due to COVID. Never did get the coach up there. So he's reunited. Not reunited. He's friends with Frank Wright. Both of them former Maryland. Quarterbacks, I think he's in a real good program with, with the team that's up and coming, the Colts. Well, he has a chance to make a name because Wentz is going there on the downslide. Yes. If he brings him back up, he can make a name for himself. And uh, <laughs> before we start our stories of the week, let me, let me pick up where I left off last week on our story on Pine Richland. Uh, after our show, I, I, I reached out and made two phone calls to the athletic director's office, Sean Simmons, about coming on the show. I've yet to receive a return call. I made two phone calls to the superintendent's office and left messages. No one answers the phone there for Dr. Miller to come on our show and give his side of this story. I have not received a return phone call from either one. That's a great job, Eddie. And that's what I you mean, do. I want to hear both sides. Yeah, that's what I, you I, do. I want to hear what they have to say. And that's what you do. And, and now all, all we have is they're, they're throwing uh, salvos back at one another. And in the middle, guys, in the final analysis, it's the players who get hurt. They're, they're caught in the middle. They're right there. And I don't know what the solution or resolution is going to be here. I heard several lawsuits are. Are, are, are pending. It, it, it's getting nasty and ugly, and it's so unfortunate. And, and in the bottom line, there's going to be a big T over Pine Richland called trouble, and it's going to be a red flag for some guys who maybe want to coach here. Red flag. Woo woo. Big, big red flag. <laughs> big red flag. Monster. <laughs> Not with 90 dressed. No red flag. Not with 90 dress. Oh, you're saying no, you, no, somebody will still jump on that job? Yeah. Okay. This yeah. is a Donnie Hole routine is all gotcha. cute right now. Okay. Yeah. While it's, you know, while well, it's on the that's true. I, I mean, e eventually. But, we were but, there. But, but still, yeah. Did but, it look to you like a place you can't get a coach? Yeah. 
Well, no, I, I, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying initially, initially maybe not, uh, maybe not in the future, but possibly in, right now, this year. Oh, be, be well, in yeah, I know, but some coaches' ego. Yeah. You're going to look at that facility, and you're going to look at 90 dressed, right? And you're going to say, you know what, I can do this. Now, I, I'm that not just sense. sure. You know, last week you guys were confident you get the job back. I'm, I'm not, not now. I'm not too sure myself right now where where it's going. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, it's going to end up in the courts, and you hope it doesn't do that. But that. Looks like where it's going. I got a feeling the next school meeting will have 400 kids with jerseys on. Uh, let's move on. Our stories of the week. We'll see what happens there in the National Hockey League. A Jake Gensel third period goal gave the Pens a one to nothing win over Boston to move them in the first place, 32, 14, and three. Seven games remain in the regular season. The Pens have the second best record in the <clears throat> National Hockey League behind Vegas, 34, 11, and two. And goalie Tristan, uh, Tristan Jari, he had. 30 uh, saves. They're really playing great hockey right now and getting ready for the playoffs. Yeah, this is when you want to play your best hockey, and more importantly, they want a game that you have to win the playoffs. one nothing, 2-1, 3-2, those kind of wins. Those and and, and that had wins. a playoff atmosphere to it. You that said it. You know, you win. said exactly. I heard the coach. He said the exact same thing. Oh, did he? He said, yeah, he said, this was big. He said, because we know we're going to have to win games like this. Right. Yeah, and they have Boston coming up again, and then mm -hmm. they have some other uh, tough games. And the last coming two are up Buffalo. Wa they, have, they have Washington. Yeah, the Buffalo won't, won't be no, – no one's easy at this, at this no. point. No. Well, the Carter trade has already paid off. He, yes, it has. He has really stepped up another line. And, it, and, that and second really, line's been solid. Yeah, and really toughness. I'm, you're talking about a guy. And I, I like the way the Penguins bought in. They, sometimes you're jealous. Somebody, they, they invite him in immediately and say, hey, he has a chance to bring us over the hump to win this title. And, 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 and yet the, uh, here's where the coaching comes in for Solomon. When Malkin comes back and some of the other injured players, do you leave that second line alone? alone? Do you drop Malkin down to the third or fourth line, or do you put him back in a second and, and move that line around? Do you, do you worry about losing some of that chemistry? No, I don't, because Malkin's a superstar when he's on. So Mark, he'll go back to the second line immediately. Carter knows his role. He'll be he'll be in that third. And as we said before, that fourth line needs to be strong. In, in the playoffs, if you're going to make that run, it's changed. Yes, it has. Hey, beat them, Bucks. Are you buying into the Bucks? You have interest. Have they gotten your attention now? They're 11 and 11. They've won 10 of their last five. They won four straight series. Third place, two and a half back of the Brewers. Gregory Polanco has raised his average 63 points from 150 to 213. Hit his third home run. Three for four the other day. And relief pitcher uh, David Bednar of Mars, 2.35 ERA. Are you drinking some of the Kool-Aid, Albert? No, I have no Kool-Aid. You're going to wait until one. they, they yeah. hit the 90 August. game mark. August. In, in, in August, they're still playing well. Eddie, I'll be the guy. First two hands up saying I was wrong. But I don't think you can use your bullpen as much as they're using it. And it'll last till August. We'll see I, I'll, I'll say the all-star break. I, I think I remember when I was a kid. The Pirates, by the All-Star game, they were nearly in first place. <laughs> After that, they went south and ended up in last place. But listen, they're, they're surprising as, as it is, and you just wonder uh, with Reynolds' the way he's playing and now Polanco. Boy, if Polanco could come around and finally hit, uh, he struggled for the last year and a half, that would be a big plus. Now, schedule means a lot, and the, and the Pirates are playing some teams that are really struggling. You know, if you're playing a team uh, Detroit, yeah, Detroit, Detroit, Minnesota awesome. and Detroit are both struggling mightily right now. So when you play them, it's important to, you know, when you play them. Absolutely. And, you know, Penguin the Pirates have done well. Hey, but, you know what, too? You know, with Pittsburgh, the only problem, like you talked about Polanco, if he hits, and the guy with the red beard, I have to figure they're both going if they hit. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I really hope. You don't I, think I, they'll try to win, do you, Al? No. No, listen. You, Not you, a chance. And, and, and that's a huge gap they have in confidence with the fans from what they did in 2015. We were all pumped up. They made that run. And then instead of adding to the team, they broke the, the team up. And you, you wonder about Reynolds. I think he's a terrific player. It would be a shame if they let that guy go. That tells me you're not trying to build. He's young, he's strong. Go. I told you that last week. I think, Moran, I, hope. I think Moran, Fraser, and Plouffe, all three of them mm -hmm. could go. But I think Reynolds is a the guy they're going to try to build around. Well, Thursday uh, night will be the uh, NFL draft, uh, the inexact science, uh, so much for the NFL pro days. They talk about their speed, their vertical jump, their bench press, uh, but don't let those tests fool you. Finally, I want to say, can we see the game tape? Can we see them 
play. It was with Chuck Knoll always mm. used to say, Coach Paul, you used to tell me, he'd listen to all the stuff about the bench press, and then he'd say, do you have some game tape? Let, let me see it. And, and the uh, scouting lingo that they come out with, uh, he's, he's as deceptive speed. <laughs> What's that mean? He's usually slow, right? Or uh, uh, he's coachable. What in the world does that mean? He's coachable with someone else is not coachable. Mm. What does that phrase mean? Coachable. How about coming up the board? Coming up the board, yeah, that's another I funny no one. Idea. And uh, he takes off plays. <clears throat> that only means one thing to me. He's lazy. Yeah, that's what, that's I don't want a guy to too. take off plays. Right. And uh, let's look at the glamour position because that's where we're going to start. How about this statistic? In the last 50 years, only three quarterbacks who went number one led their first team to a Super Bowl win and made the Hall of Fame. John Elway, Troy Aikman, Peyton Manning. So what's that tell you? about that position and all these guys. He, he's a can't-miss guy. We can go down the list from Jamarcus Russell to Ryan Leaf and so many others. They Big, strong, didn't make it. But remember, the thing that makes Elway different, he didn't go to the team he was supposed to. Those other he guys all go, go to, to lousy teams. Okay. Those other guys all go to lousy teams. Yes, he did not. True. But it, even at that – uh, some players that did go to bad teams, they helped their teams, they mm -hmm. improved. Not in the case of so many. But that, in the last 50 years, that's a huge failure at that position. Well, it's, it's difficult to win the NFL if you don't have the, the total team. Right. I mean, there's not, I don't think there's anywhere that a quarterback just is the guy that just wins mm -hmm. his. I think you have to have one, but you are going to mm -hmm. win with one. The Stafford's been a good quarterback for a long time. He has no team around him. He has no chance. You, you need a you need a, a you team, need to build. Team you need to build. He has to be happy. He's out of Detroit. Yeah, no question. Yes. No he question. has. I, I mean, when you later. when you look at it, you want to build your team. It's that quarterback. You 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 better have a good left tackle, a good center, and then defensively, you you better have a stuffer in the middle, those edge rushers, and you better have some pretty good corners. Listen to what you just said, Eddie. Yeah. You need all of that. Yeah, you need you, all you, of that to all, win. You need all of that, but. If you give 20% of your cap to the quarterback, you can't have all that. That's why it's important to win young. <laughs> Before the money builds Before they up. get off the second. Yeah, yes, Absolutely. Uh -huh. While we go from March Madness to April anxiety because the anxiety's there, who are we going to draft? Is he going to pan out? And the pressure's on the GMs. It's the fanatical interest in the NFL draft. I like what Bill Parcell said. This is not a game for the most well-adjusted people. Uh, and it's just crazy the interest that will be there oh. on the NFL draft. Uh, it's our coaches' roundtable, our mock draft guys. I think we're just as good as the experts out there who who hit and miss on all this stuff. If this were an exact science, these guys would be at C CMU and MIT. Uh, you. In ratings of general managers, Kevin Colbert of the Steelers, he's rated as the second best GM in a draft, the last, John Gruden and Mike Mayock. So that's how important it becomes, and they are evaluating the pressures on these guys. That point is, is justified. What you just said right there, we we'll never know if we're going to get the right one, but I know the Steelers have drafted tremendously. Does a great and job. I know, and I know Oakland's drafted t terribly. And, so, so, and Vegas now. And, and you know, you wonder, you wonder – those two egomaniacs together, yeah. Mayock, who he couldn't stop talking for one second when he did Notre Dame football. You wonder if he and Gruden, their egos aren't in the way. I think they're in the way. I, I think I right. they're in the way. I, I, and, and you make a key point. I think that's the key about Kevin Cole. He doesn't try to do it all by himself. No. He listens to other people. He listens to the scouts. He takes the information yeah. in. He doesn't, he doesn't do it all on his own. And then the other thing. You don't hear much from Mike Tomlin. I don't think he gets in the way. No, I was going to say that. You're talking about it's been like that forever with Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you very seldom see management and coaching butting heads. Never. Behind the scenes. They might be doing behind it. We don't hear about yeah. it. We just hear that they get along. Yeah. They, they decide they're, what's going on. They're, they're not perfect, but they do, hey, they do better than most. Hey, guys, three coaches in 50 years. Yes. I mean, and Tomlin just signed a three year yeah, extension. Come on. Hey, our top 10 picks, plus, we're going to look at the Steelers at number four. 24 and their needs. Let's go to the number one pick. I don't think it'll be any disagreement here. Jacksonville's going to take Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence, 6'6, 220. That one's done. That's for sure. That, that Urban, Urban Meyer would not come back if Lawrence was not available. He, he took this job knowing that he has a quarterback forever and now he's going to build his team with the cap. They have a lot of cap room. Yeah, they do. So that's the perfect yes. storm for Urban Meyer.
Uh, number two, the the Jets. Do you agree? Will they take Wilson? Zach Wilson. Um, who do you think they'll they're take? They're taking him for sure. There's no, that, yeah. That's setting stones too, and that's a mistake. To, to me, I wouldn't take Darnold, him. Darnold was better already. So I'd they, take Fields. Yeah, Darnold was already better. <laughs> so I, 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 I don't see anything that, that tells me anything about any of these quarterbacks except Lawrence. I, I, I only like Lawrence. I like Fields ahead of Wilson. Now, they rave about Wilson at these pro day, and, and there's no one rushing him. But now his record – uh, again, in BYU, they had a very weak schedule last Weakest year. Weakest because they didn't pick it. Right. His schedule against Power 5 teams, his record is mm -hmm. not very good. Only one touchdown pass and seven interceptions. To me, that's a, a concern there when he played against top-level competition. I don't think he should be number two. That's I, a well, I agree, too. I agree. I, was, well, I, I agree. I, I say it all the way through. I think there's only one quarterback in the top ten. And so I, uh, it's, it's Lawrence. The rest of them are all, all hope, hope. Hope, and we'll, we'll see what and, happens. And, and, you know, as we go through this, uh, who's picked at this spot or that spot dictates maybe whether who's going to trade good. up, who wants to trade down. And some teams, <clears throat> if, if someone goes that they want it, they're not going to make that trade. So now at number three to 49ers, they seem intent on Mac Jones out of Alabama. To me, he's a second-round quarterback no pick doubt. or a third no round. I, I, once again, I, did, is there some reason that Justin Fields is – Fallen behind these guys. He's bigger. He's faster. He makes all the throws. What is it that he's done that he's not up there with these guys? Three things to me. Number one, he played on his receiver. His team is so much better than everybody else's that he looks good. Number two, he's not super accurate. He, he, he throws the ball. They make great catches around him. And and, num and number three, he's more of a runner. In today's world, if, you get, if you're a runner, you're getting hurt. You're get, you're getting, and you're and he hurt. did have a couple subpar games. On big stage, oh, yes, he yeah, did against yeah, Indiana yeah, did, yeah. and Northwestern. Yeah, uh -huh. I think that had something to but do with. But still, it. I like him better than those two guys. <laughs> and I like him. I like him better than Wilson. Yeah, I do too. I, I, and and Jones, Jones. But I would never take yeah, him. Right. You know what my argument I'm against Wilson is? Yes. His age. Yeah, he's old. He's, he's older, older than Jackson. He's 25, isn't he? He's, he's older than Jackson. All right, number four, the Falcons. This is an interesting pick because it'll dictate what's going to happen here with some some trades. Do, uh, uh, Matt Ryan is how old? 35. 36, do you take a quarterback being left here at Justin Fields or the prize guy? They need to beef up their defense. They need to, do you take inside linebacker Micah Parsons, the number one rated linebacker out of Penn State? Who's your pick here for the trade. Atlanta? I see a trade here for sure. I, I, I'll be surprised if Atlanta does a trade and get three, two, two outstanding number one picks or, or maybe even two and a half, two firsts in the second round. I see a trade. This is the best player. Yeah. Let's say that. We're not saying yeah. that. Yeah. It's just what happens. In Atlanta, it's a unique situation. The coach is new. Therefore, you may have a year or so to get it the way you want it. If you go all in on pits, you're saying Matt Ryan's your guy and you're going to win now. Yeah, but then you have no foreseeable replacement exactly. in a year exactly. or two. Yeah. I, I, Micah Parsons is a hard guy to pass up here. Atlanta, they've had trouble defensively. Uh, they, they have a couple pieces. They could be pretty good. He would fit in there. Number five, the Bengals. Everyone is saying offensive ta tackle Sewell. Penny Sewell of Oregon, 6'5", 325. For me, for them, I like wide receiver Jamar Chase, LSU, led the nation in receiving in 2019, opted out in 2020. Big, tough, has that breakaway speed, six foot two oh five. To me, he fits into that offense. Well, and we didn't talk for the show. I have Lawrence number one as the best part of the draft. I got Chase. I got Chase number two. Yeah, so, all right, terrific. So I, I don't Chase know wrong with So I, I, I think. Well, Joe Burrow number, too. So I think. Yeah. Does it make sense? Play together, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and and you put him in in, in there with with the uh, the kid from uh, Pitt. Oh and, yeah. And oh boy, yeah. Boy, so and I, I think that's what the, there are there are so many offensive linemen out there. I understand Sewell can play, he's a ten year player, but boy, you need those deep threats on the outside. I'm gonna take Chase. I'm I'm with you on that one. And number six, the Dolphins. Will it be wide receiver if he's available? I think they take Chase. If not, they go to Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner out of Alabama. Eddie, I, I don't like this. We're thinking the same way. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if they're gonna they're they're gonna end up getting Chase, and if they do, you can circle right now. I'll tell you who gets the best best draft going. Miami. If yeah. Miami gets Chase, that, that circles them as number six, getting getting the second best part of the draft. Mm -hmm. Do, do you think? Do you want to stick with two as quarterback? Yeah, that's the key. Do they, they want to stick with? They seem to. With him. They're trying to. They yeah, seem but to. They're gonna find but out he's, yeah, he can't do yeah. it. He can't do it. And, and you know what? But else? they need other pieces. They had a unique year last year. I, I follow these kind of trends. Eldos too. 
like in college, like one year Notre Dame doesn't get any of the turnovers. The next year they got they got everything last year. Miami did. Miami yeah. did. But they only beat one one good play yeah. team with a winning record, yeah. Yeah. playoff oh, yeah. team. And Detroit, you know, I look at teams and how poor they are, and they desperately need a wide receiver. It's going to be either Smith of Alabama or Jalen Waddle. They have no deep threats in that offense. If they they want to help out their new quarterback, they they need to get some weapons for him. Well, if if they feel Deep threat. Waddle's the best deep threat to come in since Hill from Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Waddle has the same kind of breakaway speed. Uh, Detroit, I look from Detroit too. I look from Detroit to get, to get a lot of draft choice. They got a new coach. They said, wait a minute, it's, time. Had, it's time to rebuild. I team. had Lance going there. I don't think they like the kid from the Rams at all. I think the Rams just went rid of. Well, I would like that. I, I, I don't think I don't, like I don't think they take a quarterback because Goff like they want to build build around him. I look for them to to beef up wide receivers, running backs. Yeah. That, 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 that's area that they've been one of the poorest teams oh. in the NFL running back they're and wide receivers. They're no, they're, uh, Ed, they're just off. Yeah, they're poor. They've so been off for they 20 years. And get three, two, get some really what, good what's his name? About, about ruined them when he was general manager. The, Matt Millen. Yeah, he Matt did. Millen. He did. Hey, number eight, Carolina. I think they're sitting there pretty. And Kyle Pitts, the tight end from Florida, is going to be there. 6'5", 240, 4'5", four, speed. He could be your tight end. You want to play him wide. You want to play him in a slot. You want to put him in motion. I think he's too good for them to pass up. And what? How he'll complement the offense now with with the uh, with the new quarterback and with uh, what's his name coming back as running back from McCaffrey, injuries yeah. last year. Uh, if Carolina gets Pitts, then I'll make an announcement right here. The Carolina will will beat Tampa Bay out next year in the, in that division. That's how Carolina has players everywhere. That means you're getting McCaffrey back, which is. Best, they have decent best receivers. Oh, they have and receivers. Pitts is a game changer. Yeah, he's. I don't have so him you, there. So, you, so if he's I, there. I'm saying. I don't have him there. Up. I have offensive line for them. See, I, I, I just think he's, he's too good of a weapon. But, and when we talk about offensive line, I always say this: the chicken and the egg dilemma. No one heard of Joe Delamalier and Reggie McKenzie of Buffalo till O.J. Simpson got there. Then they became Pro Bowl offensive line. No one heard of John Kolb and Mike Webster, the Steelers. Until Franco Harris got there, then they became Pro Bowl players. So what do McCaffrey. you do? That's what I'm saying. They already got McCaffrey. So they, yeah. got, they, got the, they got the running back. you got to be a Darnold fan, right? Yeah. I am. Yeah. I told I, you. I like Darnold. I, I think he's going to have better better coaching, better weapons around I him. I like Darnold a lot. And number nine, the Broncos, I, I think they go for quarterback Justin Fields or, or quarterback Trey Lance. I, they need a quarterback. And they've been saying that all along. Yeah. They've been saying that that's been out there. If a quarterback's left right there, they're going to take it. It's one. pretty much Elway. If he weren't a hero, he wouldn't have that job. Mm -hmm. He's and, done a terrible job. Yes. And number 10, Dallas, they need help in the secondary. They gave up a Sertain. ton of touch. Patrick Sertain of Alabama. Now let's go to the Steelers. Their needs, offensive line, running back, tight end, defensive back. Here, to me, is their, their first pick at number 24. Offensive tackle, Christian Darisol of Virginia Tech, 6'5", 340. He's a left tackle. He fits in there for Villanueva. He's a very good pass protector. And yeah, they're going to go off as a line. I believe that. I really like Creed Humphrey. Creed Humphrey. I yeah. really like him from Oklahoma. I, I, he's rated in the, in the 40s. And thing, I think he's better than all the offensive linemen. I, whoever gets him is going to get a steal. But I do agree Steelers are going off as a I got the Oak State guy. Live. Their offensive line. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah he's they, a good guy. Their they, number. And uh, Liam Eikenberg and Notre Dame, too. So they're going to get some. I think offensive line. Now. You fans don't yeah. going to like that. I know yeah. you want a running back. He yeah. wasn't. They're going offensive hey, line. Let's finish up your running back. Uh, second pick, I have Javante Williams because he's a third down back. He can block. He can run. He can receive. Who do you guys like second pick? I like Mitchell. Um from Lamar, I mean from Louisiana. I think he's an outstanding back. Uh, I think he's moving up the, up the board. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I heard him say yesterday, Colbert, he said, we just do our own. He said, because some other guy can mess you up so badly, we just do our own mock up. We go from I there. I hope they don't and, take a running back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I yeah. think you get something in the fifth round, yeah. sixth round, it could be a big And I think back. their third pick, they go for a tight end. I think it's uh, Tony, Tommy Trumbull, Notre Dame, because he's a blocker. He fits I knew in. you were sneaking he, Notre Dame guy. Well, no, but here, here's what I think. <laughs> I, because the, the tight end position is weak. He's going to fit in there. He's an outstanding blocker, and he fits in there putting it next to the new tackle, and he could play fullback and H-back also. That's it for us. We've run out of time. We'll find out next week the draft results. See you then.